presentation of our conference, brothers and sisters. And as they say, uh, we've saved the best for last. And in some sense, as Dr. Song likes to say, in some sense, in some sense, it is uh, truly uh, uh, one of the most interesting papers that will be presented uh, in this conference. And the paper has been prepared by Dr. by Pastor Josiah Guy Ndombo. He is from uh, the Cameroon. Cameroon is a church pastor there, a graduate of Ayas, and is married to Malis. They have three children. He, in some sense, again, has reincarnated himself in the person of Pastor Esso this morning. And so he is not able to be here in person, but his paper uh, will be presented by uh, Pastor Esso, Dr. Esso, uh, this morning. Our, our presentation so far have reminded me Have, have reminded have made me think and also this coming up paper upcoming paper have made me think of the m about 10,000 church members in my division who worship on Sunday uh, they are uh, Sunday keeping Adventists they are Seventh-day Adventists but they worship on Sunday and so today as we are beginning the new week they are going to church uh, because today is the Sabbath for them. And that includes the country of Tonga where Dr. Sunia Fukafuka comes from. So if sometimes on some Sundays, uh, Dr. Wambaleka, you see Sunia uh, doesn't go out to play as much, that's probably, <laughs> probably because he's thinking of Sunday Sabbath in Tonga. Uh, but the, the idea is the theology of the Sabbath. And so this and how we keep the Sabbath. And so this paper uh, by uh, Pastor Ndombo is an interesting one about lighting fires on Sabbath. What does it mean? Not to light a fire on Sabbath and how it's to be applied today. We welcome uh, uh, Dr. Esso who will present this paper and we pray that the Lord will bless us and uh, enlighten us in the presentation that uh, he will share with us. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we uh, listen to this last presentation today, we pray that your spirit will enlighten our minds, give us new glimpses of light from your word that will help us in how we keep the Sabbath and how we celebrate the Sabbath. We pray that your enlightenment also, uh, as you have enlightened our pastor who has prepared the paper, may the same uh, be an enlightenment to us through Dr. Esso this morning, for we pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning once again. It is an interesting topic. Uh, uh, I enjoy reading the paper because I interact with him uh, many times and we discuss about this, uh, this important paper. It's an issue that we have in many places and also in Cameroon. That's why he decided to do also a study on, uh, on the application of Exodus 35.3 in the African context. Exodus 35.3 read. In the Bible, you shall not candle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. That's the, the, the essence of the text as it's translated. The level of development in Africa is diverse. While there are areas where urbanization is growing fast and new te technology replacing old ways of life, Many other rural uh, regions remain undeveloped using traditional technique for every day of life. So we have remote places and, and cities also. 
So Sabbath keepers in Africa experience their lifestyle in that diverse con context. In view here are different situations whereby those living in, a, in a, some rural area, whether forest or desert or savan, sub, uh, have relative hardship to candle fire for cooking, while others, mostly in the city, city dwellers, use modern devices for cooking. There is a general trend that those who don't sweat to produce fire for cooking make their food ready on Sabbath day on the ground that using any gas of an electric device for, for warming food, boiling, or even cooking does not require the same work as if using firewood. As such, while the, the command you shall not candle, you shall not candle no fire in all your dwelling place on the Sabbath day, may be understood in some way, if at all it is, by all. Its application seems to be uh, very different according to the location and the place where the people are. Either you are in the city or in the village, people have different concepts because they use different device and understanding of what the fire is about. So the problem of this, this paper is how the text of Exodus 35.3 is applied in Africa where there is both cultural and development diversity. The paper therefore seeks to reflect on the, the practices of cooking in Africa during Sabbath and explore if and how the text of uh, uh, Exodus 35.3 can relate to those practices. In the process, answer, answering will be suit for some question, including the following. What is the meaning of candling fire in Exodus 35.3? Does that text uh, relate to cooking? Shall we at all cook on the Sabbath? Uh, the test case of cooking practice for Sabbath. To a certain such observation, uh, uh, the, uh, the author Joseph uh, says, I conduct a basic survey where I distributed question to a sample of 30 church members living in an urban, uh, urbanized area in the city. The basic question included, do you usually cook on the Sabbath? First question. Number two, do you usually buy food on the Sabbath? Number three, have you already cooked at least once, one, uh, once uh, a, a Sabbath day? If yes, why? Describe your practices of making food ready for the Sabbath. Those are the, 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 the questions uh, that uh, were given the questionnaire. So, during the survey, the survey result now, out of the 30 forms of the question released, 20 people responded. To the respondents, uh, 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 he asked one additional question, how do you understand the text of Exodus? Uh, uh, a part of those questions, they asked also another question in the question, how do they understand this text of Exodus 35.3? So, the result of the test is disclosed as follow. To the question, if people were usually cooking on Sabbath, 10 people say no, 9 says yes, and 1 says sometimes. To the question if they were uh, buying food, 2 say no, 17 say yes, and 1 says sometimes. To the third question, if at least once uh, they had already cooked food on the Sabbath, 2 say no, and, uh, and 18 say yes. So, based on this uh, 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 response, the, the general observation is that the understanding of the result is not uh, unified, based also on the question that they answer. The vast majority of respondents jumped into diverse defensive explanations, presupposing that the text clearly forbids cooking. It should, not, it should now be assessed whether, uh, uh, now he says he should, he have to as, uh, assess now if uh, this text really means what it means. Because according to uh, the survey, as we, we saw, uh, uh, if we, we look very well, we are going to realize that uh, most of the people, the 20 people, at least agree that they have cooked at the buy on the Sabbath. The majority of them accept the reality. So that means that they, 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 they light fire on Sabbath. But the problem is not if they light fire, because they are in the urban area, they, 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 it's their understanding of uh, Exodus 35 who determine how they answer the question. So the question was, how do you understand this text? 
uh, and it's uh, what is important and how we should understand uh, that text the 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 answer that came is that every uh, everyone was giving its own its own answer the the understanding of exodus 35 3 was not really unified some says that okay the text mentioned only the people of Israel when they were in the wilderness in the modern society. Uh, we can do, we cannot do, and it's very simple for people now. So, uh, to solve the problem, uh, it was also important for this paper to try to, to understand what really means this text of Exodus 35. So, in the literary context, uh, 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 the, 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 text, uh, the text of Exodus 35, is a is a is a is a text who is uh, between two great command and uh, also two covenants that the god have uh, uh draw between uh, exodus 32 and exodus 34 uh, we have also the some of the command that god give there the command about the sabbath in the reading of the sabbath recommendation it is noticeable that it is a repetition of the comments given before the nearest reference in, is in Exodus 34, 21, where it reads, Six day you shall walk, but the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvesting you shall rest. This recommendation is given in the context of God renewing his covenant with the children of Israel. That covenant had previously been broken when the Israelites devote themselves in worshipping the golden calf. It is also before the episode of the, 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 the calf uh, idolatry and another Sabbath command is found. This reading of the Sabbath is important in clarifying the meaning of Exodus 35.3. From the text, the Jewish tradition permitted a fire on the Sabbath. It was scandal just before the Sabbath and not refueled. That means if you don't fuel the, the, the fire, if you candle it before the Sabbath and it continues to burn, there is no problem. Yes, there is no problem. And uh, many people, Jew people, they used to have these techniques. Uh, so they, they light the fire before and they use, like the Sabbath also, they have many rules according to the Sabbath. One of their techniques also was to do that uh, before. So this requirement is planned to be for the purpose that the house should not be left in darkness. That's what they use during the Sabbath because there was not light like we have today, electricity, many things. So they use that one. Uh, but practices arose from the sect of the Karaites to remain in darkness in the total application of this text. But there were extremists also, some Jews, some sects, uh, Jew sect. They says no light, they prefer to stay in the darkness. According to the, the reading of the Jews tradition then, this text was more comprehensive in application and uh, one was not allowed even on Friday to light a candle or to put away the things to be kept warm or to make a fire for the Sabbath. So this is for the, the most extreme school. There are two main schools in the Jew understand the school of Hillel and the school of Shama. One of them is more, more uh, 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 liberal and the other is more conservative. So the analysis of the text. Before the analysis of the text, uh, uh, the, some commentary, we, 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 we have the reading of some commentary on the text. The New American Commentary reads that the prohibition does not mention all fire, but only those in private home, since those, are, those on the tabernacle altar were entirely appropriate, because during the Sabbath, the fire was burning in the temple, in the altar there. The fire was burning. So it doesn't concern only, it's not all the fire, but the fire in the home, according to the, the New American Commentary. According to Douglas Stewart, then, the prohibition is about cooking, on the Sabbath. That possibility is accepted also by Durham, who write uh, that it is a prohibition against building a fire on the Sabbath. One definition of what is mean by customary work on the Sabbath, quite possibly one ha having to do with the preparation of food. The understanding of these comment uh, commentators is that kindling fire refers to cooking. Some commentators move forward by trying to explain in the context Thus, the Seventh-day Adventist commentary reads, In early times, the kindling of fire required considerable labor. The comparatively warm climate of the, the Sinai religion made artificial eating unnecessary, and a fire would have been kindled only for cooking purpose, not being essential to health in such a climate. 
warm food was not to be prepared on Sabbath. This is what the Adventist commentary says. It's not about the climate. It's not about this one. It's about the cooking. That's the, the understanding, the reading of the text by the commentary. So now we went to a textual analysis and what this uh, text, this uh, 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 verse uh, really says. The verse can be translated, you shall not candle a fire in all your dwellings in the day of Sabbath. The text in itself does not pose problem of understanding. It prohibits the burning of fire in the Sabbath day. The problem behind is many about the reference or application. What does burning fire refer to? It is to be generally applied to any burning of fire or it is restricted to some specific activity that involves fire. The, the verb burn usually means to burn is here in the intensive form. The only reasonable way of translating can, can be to light or candle given that, that fact that it is followed by a direct object, object. So it's a common, very clear. In the reading of the prohibition, when it says law te by H, one must first be reminded that in those days, fire implied using wood. Wood was widely used for fire. In the Pentateuch, fire and wood are linked always with the sacrificial system. It's what they use. In Proverbs also, it suggests that it was difficult to have a fire without wood in those days. It should be signal, however, that uh, all these texts do not represent the making of fire as something that was specifically difficult or which involved hard work. So, by that we, we can go to some conclusion to go quickly. A number of indicators may hint that the restriction here was not too general. First, there is a fire that was not to be quenched. That injunction reads, a fire shall always be burned on the altar. It shall never go out. That was in the, for the, 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 the sanctuary service. If that fire was not to be quenched, then it was to be kept burning even on the Sabbath. And that's what's uh, happening. And if fire for the sanctuary service was to be kept burning, then the prohibition of 35.3 finds, uh, finds a material may be also spatial or special restriction is a special restriction it's not uh, it's because on the temple is burning that that the restriction is special at that moment so the adverb translated is a continuity that is in the sense of uh, doing something in the altar that means the fire was going 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 on uh, and it should not be stopped because they they have to to fuel it so that it can continue so number two uh, so recommendation recommending the preparation of food for the Sabbath had precedence. In the experience of the manna, the Israelites were advised to, to beg, boil, and keep aside what was necessary before the Sabbath. By that way of preparing, God wanted to show that Sabbath was a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Baking and boiling were probably uh, implying making fire in that case then restrict uh, restricting boiling before sabbath was a way of restricting making fire on that day and it may concur with the prohibition of 35 3. so in the third conclusion in jeremiah 7 17 it is written the children gather wood the father gathered the fire kindled the fire and the woman need out to make cakes kindling fire here involves the whole family from the children who gather uh, fire the men who can and a woman who use it to cook. If one reads the process of fire along the same line, cooking can possibly be referred to 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 a, a thirty-five tree. So uh, whatever may be say, it is more evident that kindling fire for domestic purpose is the target of this prohibition. This is obvious in the reading of the phrase. Uh, in all your dwellings, the, 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 in all uh, your dwellings, the, uh, it's very clear that uh, it identifies a place of dwelling. The phrase indicates that the prohibition of kindling fire was limited on the sphere of habitation, meaning on domestic purpose. If this interpretation is valid, then cooking was probably included. So, implication and possi uh, possible application. In the light of the analysis of this text, it appears that God insists on the holiness of the Sabbath and he insists on the sacredness of his presence through the sanctuary. For the Sabbath, that holiness was to be kept through cessation of secular work. The kindling of fire is among the works restricted on the Sabbath. The fire here refer, refer to, uh, refers 
to seems to be to be restricted to the home sphere and cooking is most probably in view that people cook on sabbath on the basis of modern technique seems to find no ground on this text because what is prohibited is candling fire and the possible work that it involved the text does not prohibit hard work it prohibits work Nowhere is the making of fire presented as, some as something that was to be prevented on the Sabbath because it was specifically difficult. Simple or difficult, fire was not to be kindled. The, the subsequent question then becomes whether cooking can be at all practiced. Can, can there be circumstances where cooking can be allowed? Uh, this question may find a positive answer if process from other perspective, notably when we talk about Jesus' practices and inter an interpretation of Sabbath practices. However, that perspective was not the, the purpose of this study. Uh, even in those cases, it may be mentioned that exceptional circumstances must guide the action. So, cooking shall not become the rule. In conclusion, the aim of this paper was to investigate the, the application of 35.3 in the African context, this was specifically relevant given the unpleasing trend of people living in urbanized uh, area who involve themselves in cooking on Sabbath. The study has shown that uh, many people tend to prepare food on Sabbath even uh, when their understanding is close to the correct reading of the, the Exodus 35.3. While the justification of cooking on Sabbath is diverse, it has been clear that the majority of people still apply the text of 35.3 as prohibition, uh, cook, uh, prohibiting cooking on the Sabbath. It therefore ap appears that the practice of cooking on Sabbath is not necessary due to a lack of understanding of 35.3, but on different factors, although some seems to explain it by the availability of modern technique of cooking. This study, unfortunately, was not aimed to investigate on the comprehensive biblical reason that framed the practice of cooking in Africa. It was simply aimed to investigate on the application of 35.3 in Africa. More study on the topic will be needed to explore the other venue that may explain the growing habit of cooking on Sabbath. Thank you. Wonderful. I can see some wheels starting to turn in some minds. So cooking on Sabbath, there may be some exceptions, but not the rule. I wonder where the potluck can come under those exceptions. Uh, but thank you, Pastor Esho. Now open for questions. Can I see the hands of those who might have questions or comments? To Okay, thank you. Will three. Brother Moses. Um, I know I know you are not the researcher, but maybe you could relay the questions or if you could even answer. I've always been baffled at the idea of a cafeteria, especially Adventist cafeteria cooking on Sabbath day. And um, I come from a college which has working students who will sometimes go to church and sometimes they will not to cook for the entire population who are going to come and eat at cafeteria. So I was wondering, and not only do these people practice this, but also when I was in UK, many families sometimes eat out. Is this the same thing as, as just, uh, is this an exception or we should not do this on a regular basis? I, I think uh, it's uh, the same things that the paper said because when I was also in the boarding school, uh, it was the practice was different. Friday we go and they give us double portion. Uh, usually they used to give us double portion, and sometimes uh, it's, it depend. It depend of uh, uh, some places. Uh, and uh, after uh, sometimes this practice of giving double portion changed a little bit. People start to say, okay, we can do something, and they start to do also like uh, yeah, the other are doing now. So I, I see that there was the, the people have changed, maybe because of modern technique, maybe of uh, something like that. But the practice before, it was like that. They, they used to give a double portion, then people change again. 
to other uh, other means of uh, observing the Sabbath. So I I. According to the paper, the paper is very clear. It's very clear. The command is very clear. Is uh, it was no fire, no fire. That's what the, the text read clearly. There is no fire there. So uh, I don't know. Maybe you have uh, people call fire. We don't maybe call electric because when someone put someone was saying that if I put my electric one, it's not the fire, the gas one. But because because the gas imply fire, but the electric one doesn't show any. Anybody, but, but, so he can still do something. <laughs> so, but it's difficult. But I think the principle, what we do usually in the Bible, is that we follow a principle that we avoid as much as possible. And I think the, the episode of the manna is help us to understand that uh, uh, the, the, there is a double portion, the preparation that we need to have so that we cannot have any activity on the Sabbath day. Uh, I'm, I was also also concerned by the buying, because we say people go and sit in the restaurant, but that uh, bring us back as the paper said also the, all the detail and all that bring us back to Exodus with the, everyone you are servant you are all the people should observe the Sabbath, but it's not the reality everywhere. If not, if all observe the Sabbath, there will be no in a cell, no things the place where you can go and eat on Sabbath. Everything will be closed. So, but. Since those places are open, I think it's why people are going there, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's very difficult. The the most difficult is if our places are open also. Uh, um, my concern is, <clears throat> in the context of Exodus 35, these people were en route to a place they have not settled. So God was taking care of them and providing their food and regulating how they should eat. I'm wondering, when they settled down into their various homes, when the manna stopped flowing and they started planting their own food and preparing, is there any information anywhere that this passage say apply? And my second question is, if, if you can assist some of us to write this question and send it to the pastor, it's very important so that we, we don't just spend our time and talking and there is no reality, no outcome. Because in my place, I don't know whether in your places, but we have come meetings. Come meetings. In the villages, you don't have refrigerators to store food for hundreds of people. They have to eat. So, I don't know why you have the answer, but should we cook for those come meeting if we follow Exodus as if we were in a wilderness experience? Should we cook? Thank you. We'll, we, we'll fill the other questions, and then Pastor Ezra will write them down, and then we'll try and uh, answer those. Uh, Pastor Henry? And, uh, sorry, who are the other questions? At Koto and okay. Uh, thank you. Probably, if I, uh, I'm allowed to suggest maybe that then the author to look on the linguistic study on these lo tevaru uh, ash uh, though shall not kindle fire. This is lo plus imperfect and pl in, uh, imperfect. If you check the entire Old Testament and Pentateuch is actually uh, the word, I mean, the, the clause is really heavily depend on, on the Zid Laban as the life setting. As the appeal there, it's uh, stating that like the, the happening or the action is really ended there in the context of Bat Midbar, which is in the uh, in, uh, uh, wilderness. So you cannot find uh, beyond Pentateuch or judges and even, you know, prophets, even the uh, uh, small prophets and even New Testament. So maybe I like that, so I like to suggest that to look. So uh, in, in short, like whether that clause 
displays discontinuity or continuity of kindling fire or not. And as I see also, this is uh, uh, in connection to as is the workers, pastors, you know, who travel a lot, for example, travel across Traverse School uh, within Asia region, you know, and happen to maybe land on Sabbath. And I was informed, even I will share that, or, or some of them, they brought stove. And they went to the hotel because uh, people, uh, um, maybe not like my country, that they really respect and, and respect pastors like a god. You know, welcome, welcome, welcome. And, and they prepare food. But some of the countries not. So they have to cook in the hotel. Cook rice, cook noodle, and, and they eat. And they enjoy a lot. So this thing also I, I've, I've, I've noticed. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Henry. Uh, yes, Pastor Clifford. And then Pastor Ecuador. Thank you. I think it's, it's good it provokes a discussion, but my problem, I think there are basically two. Number one, it sounds literalistic. The, his uh, reading becomes very literalistic. And therefore, if we follow the same principle that he has used, it means we will uh, have to do away with the freakies because freakies use heat. That's the physics from, from a, from a freak. It's, it's heat. And uh, there are many things that can be problematic if we apply that text the way he has applied it. Then the second problem that I have had, it's not clear to me, is it an exegesis or is it a... Um, is it a case study? Or because it seems like he has tried to put two in, in one. Was it an exegesis or was it a case study? Was it, was it giving us the views of the people on the text? Or was he examining the text itself, what it, it means? That that's, those are my two problems with the... Thank you, Mr. Clifford. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Um, maybe even those who live in the snow, they need the uh, heat in the house. They should not light also on the chimney. Or my concern is about. I'm a bit confused about kindling fire, cooking. What is the main uh, uh, issue there? And uh, what if I cook food that does not need fire? Also, is there any findings in the Jewish practices after when Christ was here? I remember I stumbled over these texts many times when Jesus went to the house of a Pharisee on a Sabbath day and they served him food. I don't know how they did it uh, at that time. Is there any hint about it that could strengthen the, the paper? Maybe he could look into that. How did receiving Jesus, what did it involve receiving Jesus and giving him food on Sabbath? Thank you. Thank you. One question from our... Uh, and the last... Did, did anyone else have any other question? Uh, okay. My first That's question is... Uh, I was wondering why, if it's about the fire, I was wondering why LNG White allows warming of food, uh, but does not allow cooking of food, since both will require fire. And <laughs> if it's about the mana, I was wondering, you know, there is mana in Angola. <laughs> Last A80, if it still applies, you know, uh, these things. <laughs> and uh, one more question is, is there any instance other than the priests of cooking during Sabbath in the whole Bible? So those three questions. Thank you. Okay. Last, oh, two more questions and then we, we are done. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, what, what caught my attention was the survey. In, in the second part of the question, whether they eat out, they buy food, According to your findings, 17 say they do it. 
which seems to suggest there is a serious problem. In my country, a town church, after service, people go out to restaurant. Is that a lesser evil than cooking? Because it seems people, now this text is serious, that the lesser evil is to go out and buy because we are not lighting a candle. I think this is important in addressing, but it's very interesting in the practice, in the experience of the, the Africans, uh, that they rather buy than to cook, to light. And, and so I, I think it's very cardinal that we, you, you help. I thank you for the paper that stimulates this debate because it's precarious. I just, uh, I'm interested in uh, maybe uh, deepening the research. I don't know if the author has considered some of the questions that uh, are very important to this paper. But for me, uh, the first thing that I want to know, there is a tradition of not cooking on Sabbath as given to Jewish people. Uh, is it linked to Exodus 20 uh, from verse 8 to 11? If yes, what is really the purpose of not cooking on the Sabbath? What is behind it? What is the idea behind it, not cooking on the Sabbath? Is it work? Or there is something beyond that? Thank you. There's no other question. Thank you, Pastor I'll, I'll, I'll send the question. <laughs> he was trying to, to get uh, the connection, but uh, the Skype was uh, not working. The internet, he has a problem with internet because now it's, a, it's very late. So, and usually it's when it's late that everyone wants to use internet in my country. So it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that he cannot be there to try to... Uh, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, some of the questions like uh, uh, if this passage is uh, still apply after the settle, settling down or in Kana when the people settled there. So I, I will say that uh, according to the paper, that's why he gave a position on Jewish tradition. This tradition continue. People continue. All the things, the practice that we read in the New Testament. Are the practice, the, all the laws of the Sabbath or different law, are the practice that people were keeping. It's not just something that stopped when they, they settled in Canaan. In fact, they were trying to make it and, uh, and make the things there. So uh, if they, they find a way of the distance of the Sabbath or refu refueling the fire, know how to keep God's law uh, in a way that uh, at least uh, that's why we say they were so legalistic because they wanted to keep that one. At least we know that by the Jewish tradition, they will continue to, to, to keep this uh, understanding. It was important for them uh, and many other laws that they have uh, in the Jewish society. But it's a good point that we'll, we, we can still also uh, look at it. Uh, uh, Pastor Henry says about the linguistic. Of course, he, he looked a little bit and he can combine with the, the question. Uh, the other question was, uh, is it an exegesis or not? No, the, 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 the paper was simple. The method is simple, is simple is that the author assumed that uh, there are things that people do and many things, uh, there are facts also, but how to confirm the fact, he, 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 he start by a survey and say, what are you doing, what is it? And people responded. And based on that, he asked them also the question, how do you understand Exodus 35.3? Because their practices is related to their understanding. Like we say, uh, we, it's, it's very clear that we, we say that ethics is based on theology. So it's what your theology is, that where ethics will be. So based on, 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 on this uh, understanding, so what people practice is their understanding of 35.3. So the 35 tree, people say, no, the 35 tree is not really about this one. Some people say it's about this one and this one. So you have to look into the text and try to see why, how the command is. Of course, the, this is not the, 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 the full paper, the entire of the full paper. But many commentary, as we read there, some, the commentary are more 
inclined, most of the, 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 the commentary are more inclined to say that this command re is referring to cooking. It's referring to cooking, specifically cooking. So, and uh, also the analysis of uh, maybe the closures and some of those things, there are details that right there. Yeah, I think the author have considered that uh, the, the, all the verbal form and everything, he recognized that the, the word is in intensive form, it's a PL, it's, a, it's a recognized that it's in intensive form uh, and uh, the translation also. And uh, I think uh, we can say, okay, uh, the command was just made for that time, but according to the Jew, the Jew exegetes, they did not believe that it was just for that time because it was continuity. They continued to, to find a way how to keep this one. So even the Jews exegetes, when they read uh, the text, they were not thinking that the text stopped there at the moment where they were in the wilderness and did not continue somewhere uh, else. That's uh, maybe probably... Uh, one of the footnotes that is not here. Uh, 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 food does not need, uh, yeah, food does not need fire, of course. The manna uh, is, is, is baked, if maybe in heaven, we don't know. Uh, but it was coming down to, to people. And we have this tradition that even Mrs. White says that we should also not cook uh, uh, meals that are very delicate, that can spoil easily. Uh, in Africa, we have also meals, because we are talking in the context of Africa. Uh, we, we have uh, things that when we cook them, we ca they can stay longer. They can stay, we cook Friday, they can stay even one week. Uh, one week, we can still eat them, and they are still, and there are food also in Africa. It's only when they sleep that they became nice. So, uh, and we know this type of food, when they make it, it's only when they do one day. <laughs> one day that the next day is, when we eat it, it's nice. So these are the type of food also we can use. That's are the things that uh, our old mother they used to do, and to find way to do. I don't know exactly, but uh, uh, he follow quite a procedure of exegesis. It's not uh, all the things, but he follow all the step: uh, textual analysis, literal analysis, and many contextual analysis. He follow all the steps of exegesis before he reach that conclusion. So. It's, it's good to have the, the entire paper will be given to you, then you can go through it. And if you have some suggestion, you can also still to write to him so that he, he can look at it uh, very clear. So uh, there are people who, who talk about Jesus and the fire is a, is, a, is a great study that they have to do also. But the, all the episodes in the New Testament, as we see in the gospel, we see clearly that there's a conflict between Jesus and the Pharisees. And made the Jews. They, that means that they have a way to under, they understand most of these texts most literally. They want to apply it very literally how it is. So that was maybe the fight between them and Jesus because it seems Jesus have more uh, uh, different way to apply and to understand them, but they were more literal. So the the other question was maybe about warming food and this one that is also what AGW says. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, some people say fridge and other things, all these things in the modern technology, that's why it's a struggle. This water, the paper, you know, uh, urbanized area is a struggle for people because all this technology use uh, fire uh, in some way. It's not the, the wood fire, it's not this one, and this, but they use fire because physics and other things, we understand that. Uh, uh, but uh, the reality is that heat is not fire, usually. We have to make also this component in physics. Heat is not usually fire. <laughs> heat can be produced without fire also. So it's, it's possible to have heat without fire. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, the, the many people use many different things like, uh, uh, that's why the problem is, how can we, and the text is very clear, is no fire. So what do we consider as fire in our context? That is another question that we have to answer. That's uh, the main question we need to answer ourselves. What do you consider as a fire now in this context? If you have to do contextualization of that verse and you go in places, how are you going to do that one? So uh, the restaurant problem is still a problem. And I think we will not solve that problem unless everyone became Adventist. And true Adventists, I think we cannot solve the restaurant problem. It's, it will still be a problem. 
until 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 and people are going to all the people will not worship god and keep the sabbath like we want so there will still be a, a, you should have a restaurant and the potluck of course we assume that people who came with the food on the potluck are something that they prepare before that's why we have the paraskeo the day of preparation that day is to prepare everything if not it doesn't make even sense if you have some activity that you want to do on sabbath if you think that you can do there is no sense even to have a day of preparation because it's for me it doesn't it doesn't it's not useful to have again a day of preparation if i can still do something on on sabbath so it, it's uh, maybe something to reflect on and uh, the what is the purpose and the last question on, on, on not cooking what was the purpose or not cooking it, the purpose i think uh, it's uh, the, like the the first verse is very clear the purpose for is that it was that the people were saying that uh, it's it's clear that they have to keep the sabbath they have to rest on the day of the sabbath it was understood that people have to rest on the day of the sabbath so uh, doing cooking or doing this one involve uh, uh, many other things uh, of course we are going to see when we have a potluck here uh, yeah there are people who have to go there carry this one they and sometimes you forget something and sometimes there are many things that involve it's not easy i think this study it's it's a study that is open the way for many other reflection and we can still reflect on it if this command how can i apply it in my house because one of the most important thing according to this command is very clear that is a special the the burning of fire is special because in the temple the fire was burning is special and it's related to cooking that's it's more clear according to the context so uh, according to those two elements we need to reflect in our in our place to know that if it was targeting the command was clearly targeting the house where the dwelling place of the people where they live the dwelling place of the people so the shavav of the people that means that uh, they have to uh, uh, we have to consider that that point uh, and it's uh, it's important for us to to know what to do in our house uh, that's uh, maybe what we can say and i think we we will transmit the question and the other interest and another paper on the same uh, on the same issue it's uh, i think it's welcome thank you very much and that concludes the last presentation let's put our hands together for <laughs> pastor esso and also uh, the pastor that prepared the paper thank you so much we will now uh, go into our concluding uh, sex segment of our program and Let's uh, take a few moments just to wait for